Hey guys, it's AJ. Um, of course, hot and a little messy already because we've been um, preparing tomatoes to make tomato juice. Um, I told you guys the other day that I did tomatoes. And this is what my tomatoes look like. Um, I probably could have squished them down a little bit more and I wouldn't have quite so much room floating in there, but when I chop up a tomato to go into spaghetti or um, any recipe that I use and I have a fresh tomato, I just chop it up and throw it in. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, you need to can tomatoes and start by peeling them and doing this and cooking them. I don't do that when I cook, so why would I do it when they're in here? So what I did was I just chopped them up like I would throw them in a stew or something. I did leave them uh, rather large and then I pressure canned them. And uh, we've already opened one up. Um, we're great with the results, not a problem. But the hillbilly likes to drink tomato juice. And he wanted old fashioned tomato juice like his mom used to make. Um, of course his mom can do a lot of things that I can't do. But his mom and dad when they used to do it, had this little guy, and it comes with this little bowl. We used this to get the stuff that we didn't want, uh, the seeds, the skin, blah, blah. And then I had another bowl sitting in front, the collected juice, then we poured it all into one pot, stirred it up so that we made sure that all the pulp and um, juices, everything was consistent. Um, if you would like to see this in action, let me know. Um, if anybody really does want to see what this little thing does firsthand, on here. Um, I'll be doing another batch of tomatoes as soon as some more come on. The tomatoes that I canned uh, as tomatoes I was given by a friend. Um, this batch is what we've got out of our garden and we should have another batch. I already have 13 pints in my canner. So the one reason I went ahead when I bought this and I made sure that I had the biggest um, canner that Presto carries. I can do 18 pints in this total. But for this process, I wanted to, the first batch, go ahead and do, I've got uh, one more jar that I was going to let you see me fill up before I put it in. Then I'll show you how I check my lid and I'm going to let my pressure canner heat up. I understand you can water bath tomatoes. Um, the Hillbillies family, they didn't even can their tomato juice. They did the whole process where we cooked them down, ran them through the um, strainer to get the seeds and such out. Then they would put it back in the pan and um, it was already hot. They processed their jars and then they just sewed them up. And my father-in-law would say, um, oh, sometimes there's a little mold on top. We just scrape that off. Um, I don't scrape mold off stuff and eat it. So I'm going to pressure can these. Um, anyway. I've already got my water going in my canner. You see if I can point you down just a little bit. My kitchen is atrocious. Uh, there we go. And this is what our tomato sauce looks like. Tomato juice, I'm sorry. Our tomato juice looks like. It's very um, rich looking. It's not all watered down like some of the store-bought stuff is. Um, I'll be doing dishes until morning. Like I said, I'm going to let you watch me. Um, my one little jar that's left here, uh, my pan will hold 14. That's why I went ahead and just did 14. I went ahead and sterilized them in my oven. And these little pour pitchers really do make canning a breeze. I have a clean cloth. Making sure that my lid rings are going on a nice clean jar and these are still a little tepid so I'm trying to hold it gently okay and this is what I end up with looks really good um, we were originally just going to do quartz let me go ahead and <coughs> make sure that my lid's okay real quick I uh, just check and make sure that my gasket's fine. Um, I run a toothpick all the way through my breather to make sure that it's clear and free from any gunk. As you can tell, my lid has gone through some use, but I 
try to keep them as nice as possible and as clean as possible. Line the arrows up, twist the lid, and I'm done. Now all I have to do is wait till it starts steaming a bit, put my topper on, uh, let it come up to pressure. And like I said, these are tomatoes. You really don't even have to pressure can them. So I'm just going to do them for about 10 minutes. You can't ever process juice. It's already juice. So it should be fine. Um, what I was going to say is the hillbilly, you have to forgive me for sweating all over this process here, guys. Um, the hillbilly was originally just going to have me do quarts. Um, usually when you buy tomato juice in the store, it always comes in a, you know, a gallon or a quart bottle or whatever. Um, which is good if you're cooking. I use one of those, I'm not sure what the exact ounce it is, but it, it's probably like maybe a 60 fluid ounce, 64 fluid ounce bottle of tomato juice when I um, make goulash. Um, but he primarily wants this to drink. If you're going to get something to drink and you want to use a mason jar, Normally, you just want a pint, especially if it's something really um, as filling as, as tomato juice would be. So I told him we would do pints to drink out of. Um, I'm going to stop at Walmart uh, sometime later this week, probably. I know they have lids for the regular mouth. You just snap on. It has a little sippy spot. Um, I'm not sure if they do for the wide mouth as well. And I actually had several wide mouth pints this time because I'm running out of pints. But um, I'm going to see about getting those. So he can just open this, pop it on, be good to go. And the rest that I have left, I have ooh, probably another pitcher and a half. So I can probably do between three to four pints. I'm sorry, quarts. Um, so I'm going to let these go while I process a few more of my jars, my quart size jars in the oven. And by the time I pull these out, then I'll have some quarts ready to go in and my process will be done for the day. I'm hoping to get at least my 14 pints and three uh, quarts, if not four quarts. So I'll let you know when the whole process is complete, how it ended up, and let me know down there what you think. And if you really want to see the little tomato gadget in action, um, the name of it, this thing, I don't believe, I'm going to go research this here in a bit, just because I'm, I want to know. This is a very heavy duty thing compared to like the little apple coral peeler things like you get now. Um, this was made by Moplin. And I don't even know what that other word is. I think it's propylene. Polypylene. Um, M-O-P-L-E-N. So I'm going to go take this in with me, um, sit down at the computer, go boo boo and maybe when I show you guys all this process done, I'll let you know a little bit more about this machine and what you can get today, what the price ranges are. We wouldn't be using this. We would have to have hand mushed with a potato masher and blah, blah, blah. But since this was already owned by someone who doesn't mind if we borrow it, we borrowed this. Um, and like I said, if they're expensive, we'll continue to borrow that or I'll do it with a potato masher and be done with it. Um, I'm not lazy, just cheap <laughs> and poor. So anyway, um, I'm not steaming yet, so I've got a few minutes. Uh, I will let you guys know probably, um, I'll just do a second video in a little bit. Talk at you later. Bye.